And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Just, just like that. That's, That's right. Do. Sometimes you show up you to work and like you just want to hang out a little before you actually do any work. Just like that. No, this one's my fault. I that goddamn... I was, you know, on my, I was falling on my sword, dude. You don't have to do it, dude. It's me. It's your damn birthday. It is my birthday. Happy birthday. It's the Bonfire Birthday Edition Comedy Central Radio. Serious XM95, I'm Dan Soder, and that's the birthday boy, Big J Okerson. Lou, Lou, DJ Lou's going to be a clown today for me. So. Yeah, he dressed up. <laughs> he dressed up to be a clown. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Pantsless clown Lou. Am I walking on sunshine? I thought you might enjoy this on your special day. Both, Why wouldn't I? Both Lou and I are very sick, and we still showed up for the show. Because we Lou, were you feel kissing. sick too? Yeah. What's wrong? We're, we both have the same thing. I'm so unhealthy because of my smoking, but I just I couldn't get out of bed today. Did you find out Jeff Ament or something is like has something terminal? No, that would be. I, I might not show up for that. He put on Vitology and just vibe. <laughs> Who's your guy in, in Pearl Jam? Who's like the guy? Is it Eddie? It, they're all my guy. It's a team. Any one of them. Mike McCready goes down. What you're if sad. there's a fist fight between Mike McCready and Eddie Vedder? Who do you? Whose side do you take? Who? Uh, I take Eddie's because he's short. He's like uh, barely five two. How about they no. got to kick? How they got to kick one of the Holy Trinity out? McCready, Ament, uh, Vedder. Can't. Someone's got to get booted out of the band. Can't be Vedder, obviously. How about we do a fuck Mary kill? Ament, McCready, Vedder. Perfect. And keep in mind, Pro Jim's not going to be Pro Jim unless there's a guy going, me, me, Yeah, that's Temple of the Dog. So you make one wrong move and Pearl Jam becomes Temple of the Dog. Is that what you want? I, I saw Temple of the Dog and I, I missed Eddie Vedder. I didn't like it. Really? Because it was my band, but with Chris Cornell fronting them. Did you feel them. like you were cuckolding? He was too tall. He was too tall. He sounded great, but he's just like, get the fuck out some, of here, guy. This is my band. You're doing some light cuck work? Is it just Pearl Jam with uh, Chris Cornell? Yes. Yeah. That's is that it? Yes. That's yeah. Temple of the Dog. I thought there was like some Alice in Chains in there. No, or? that's Mad Season. I never even heard of that shit. That that is the lead you singer. You know what's weird is it's your birthday and you're getting older and mm -hmm. we're all getting older because that's how time works. Thirty nine, dude. Last hey, year in the thirties. You look great. You well, look that's great why I put on a blazer and a sweatshirt. I love it. What I you love said, you said when I came in, that you oh, were the Family Guy joke. Where they do uh, three guys walk. He's like, yeah, like those people that wear uh, that wear sports coats with jeans. And he's like, I'm. <laughs> I just came from a rodeo and I need to go to a fancy dinner. And the second guy's like, I'm in my 40s and I'm grabbing onto my youth. And then the third guy's like, I want to cheat on my wife in Las Vegas. He's like, I got something for all of you. Well, guess what? And then you walked in and I was like, I just watched that uh, before I left. But you're getting older and I was like, as we talk about like Temple of the Dog and Pearl Jam and Mad Season, there's probably listeners of the bonfire who are like, all right, Dad Rock. And it's just weird to think. Oh, most certainly. That see, like Isabella and Carla are coming in, but Isabella would be like, "You old, shut up, old man." About you. like the way. Well, she wouldn't even know what those anything about. She wouldn't even say that's old music. She would go, "What's that? What is that? What is that?" She might not know who You're Pearl like, Jam is. There was a time where Seattle made everything. We should ask her trivia and see if uh, she found just break loose heart with like Pearl Jam trivia that she doesn't know. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee she wouldn't know anything. But no, she, she got me the, the worst one she got from me where I was like, Isabel, if you ever want to, I'd love to take you to see Marilyn Manson. And she goes, who's she? Oh, I, uh, you grew up around this music. This is what I influenced you with. <laughs> What's, is this, this is the jam? This is, no, this is Mad Season. This is Mike McCready, uh, uh, the lead singer of uh, Lane Staley. From, uh, I love Lane Staley. Oh, Lane Staley's in this band. He's the singer instead of... Uh, How did I not know this? Oh, well, yeah. Let's all learn. We're all Do learning you know something. It? No, I mean, I've heard of Mad Season, but I've never listened to it. So good. I You're so through a Mad Season. I guess you could say the bonfire's going through a little bit of a Mad Season. Going through its own Mad Season. <laughs> Somehow this music, like, when you hear it, it just makes you want to sing like that. Just hold on to your words. At the temple of, temple of the dog. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. You got more of that? You got more of that juice? Because I don't want to interrupt it. I got a bunch of it. Hit it. But say your part. It, there was no dancing at uh, Temple of the Dog. It was all like dirges like this. It was, you wanted to kill yourself. Yeah, but it's like. It's, it's, pretty, fun, close, it's, it's like, pretty close to kill yourself, yeah, it's like It's like floppy yeah. arms. It's like floppy, uh, floppy tit, hairy armpit dancing, though, at uh, Pearl Jam. I see more like Circle K manager. You at know, the jam? Like, just like, I hate my job. <laughs> Man, 
when I find a woman under three bills, I'm going to marry that bitch. I liked it growing up because it was different because my Trish was always blasting Bonnie Raitt and like Amy Grant. and Who like was? <laughs> Trish. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what my mom would Trish always Trish used rock. to bump it? Oh, Bonnie Amy Raitt. Amy Grant? And like James Taylor. It was folk. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I said. That was fun information we've been sitting on for a while because we haven't had the right way to explore it. I can't believe I never told you that. It, it, you dropped it like it's something that was like, well, you know, the common knowledge that, uh, yeah. you know, Trish was a folk singer back in San Fran. Like, yeah. What? I come true. She sleeps in the sand. She was a folk singer. <laughs> Is this fucking... That was Forrest Gump. Was that your mom? Yeah. She my mom I come true. She sleeps so your mom, when your dad met your mom, she was naked singer. behind Dude, a guitar? Someone tweeted that out at me. When we first brought it up, they were like, I imagine Gary meeting Trish. Like it's Forrest Gump, he takes her off stage when she's naked. <laughs> You don't need to do this. Uh, yeah, my mom like was like a folk singer in Denver, and then she moved to San Francisco to be a folk singer. <laughs> was she successful in any way? No. I mean, she bad gare. Yeah, she grabbed a sweet piece of corduroy dick. Hell yeah, but uh, big hog from what we understand. No, it was good. It was, it was it, from what, what Trish told me later, my father had a good-sized penis, but Nick, my stepdad, had a, had a real one. Yeah, but you said you said you saw his wallop, yeah, but you were a boy. Six. Yeah. I was six and seven years old, and a naked man was crawling still, into a though, couch it, bed with but me. But still, if you get, we talked about this, but if you catch that dong hanging on the zipper flop it into the pants thing like that's you're hanging all right yeah he didn't wear underwear i would never have that so that was every morning when he put his shorts on and it goes from like it goes from like zipper to belly no i don't think that much i no, don't know no, what i'm saying when he when he hits it on the zipper it like flops up to his belly <laughs> yeah. and then like he then it just falls into the pants you should be a dick scientist where you study like the physics behind how dicks fall if i could afford a lab coat <laughs> that's all i need by the Hot. way the only thing i'm missing is a lab coat and a burner <laughs> with a hoodie under the lab coat <laughs> and knuckle gloves i'm dick scientist jay okerson <laughs> dr jay okerson i'm sorry the doctor is in don't you understand the g-force of a penis hitting a thigh has the exact same as a car going into a telephone pole at 40 miles an hour. Um, but my mom got Guillaume Beret. I mean, she had like a gig. She had like a residency at a couple like places. It's so great. And then she got Guillaume Beret and they had to perform a tracheotomy and they cut her vocal cords. She could, oh. talk. She could talk now, but she yeah. can't. Yeah, like she gave up singing after that. that I, I forgot that she used to be able to wail on the guitar when I was a kid. Did you see her do whatever? I saw her wail on the guitar once with my aunt, because my aunt could still sing, her sister. And one time when I was like eight, my mom busted out the acoustic and just fucking started shredding. And I was like, oh, all right. You know, like nailing chords, you know, like... I remember, she has, like, long, bony fingers, so to watch her, like, nail a chord change, I was like, get it, T-Rish. Because <laughs> she was like, nyang, 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 nyang. <laughs> just, like, changing it up. <laughs> Fucking little Danny Soder walks into the room. I'm all, oh. Hey, Mom, can my friends come over tonight for dinner? Ooh, what's those tasty licks? She's all, hold on, Dan. Hold up, Danny. Oven's still preheating, and now I'm heating up, too. <laughs> Mom, look at the action on those strings. Is that hurting your fingers? Like, I'm all calloused up, baby. I'm like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I play to the bleeds. <laughs> uh, dude, one of the funniest things you were talking about is when I told you that my mom was a folk singer, we started talking about her doing other covers. And something that's made me laugh on public transportation is Jay and I were outside of his apartment doing my mom doing a folk version of War Pigs. <laughs> and it was just making me laugh. My mom covering Deep Sabbath, but in a folk way. Uh, no more war pigs have the power. Have the power. Yeah. What the hell is this? This isn't war pigs. I know. Try, well, it was. This is more jam? No, I was trying to get a cover version of somebody doing it. Like a, this a is folk? Way. We were doing yeah. the guitar of this. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gary comes in and puts out his Marlboro Red. <laughs> Who's the babe rocking Sabbath? <laughs> Your mom's up on the neck. <laughs> Your mom's fucking ripping through your eruption. Her hair's, mm. <laughs> her hair's in front of her face, like Slash. <laughs> she's just fucking going at he, it. She catches a peek of him as the as the hair splits over one eye. He goes, mm. and he goes like this. Nice corduroy shorts. Electrical guitar. He goes, I want, I want a double rum and coke. And the axe goddess up there. <laughs> yeah. Who's the name of the axe goddess? <laughs> who's the who's the goddess that wields that mighty axe? <laughs> oh! Hello, San Francisco. It's Patricia Soda in the house. Right now, my last name is Putman because I'm not married to Gary. <laughs> I hope you're ready to get your dick kicked in. I think I 
think I just saw my husband walk in the door. I'm gonna make a boy with your semen. <laughs> That man's jizz is running free because he doesn't wear underwear. <laughs> the idea of you coming home with your friends like, guys, we gotta be quiet because my mom is upstairs just practicing. <laughs> guys, she pops out of the room, she goes, Dan, did you guys hear that? Was that pretty sick? Guys, please tell me someone just caught me wailing downstairs. <laughs> You're lucky there's still a basement. There's blue <laughs> shit out down there. I didn't know. Oh, Dan, sorry, I didn't realize your friends were here. What? Yeah. Hey, boys, you want to see a lady play a double neck? <laughs> um, as Gary leaves, he goes, I'm usually a Buffett man. But I think that just changed the way I Because usually I'm a pirate. But I'm a parrot head. But now <laughs> I'm an axe guy. Yeah, she never brought it up. She sold her guitar and shit and just never brought it up. That's it. That's it. She got rid of the guitar and just walked away from it. She walked away from the game. That sucks, though, the fucking vocal cords thing. Yeah, you know, I think Guillaume Barre sucked more because you're completely paralyzed. But. Right. Like, she can. She she got all of it back. You can. It returns. You're, when you have Guillaume Barre, you're. you're That's you're, so crazy to me still. You just catch it. Dude, when she tells me the story, she just, like, woke up one day and her feet were asleep. Mm hmm. And she was like, oh, my feet are asleep. I must have sat on a nerve or something. And then she, like, walked around. And then she said it moved up to her knees. And then by, like, she took a warm bath to be like, oh, maybe this. And then by the time I got up to her thighs, she was like, to her roommate, she's like, I think I have to go to the hospital. And then within, like, eight hours from her rib cage down, she was paralyzed. And then it went all the way up to, except the right side of her face. It seems like a video game disease that, like, you have to, like, yeah. like the Last of Us type thing. <laughs> or it's a back in the future, back to the future kind of thing where I'm like, ah, uh, uh, she's like, I'm disappearing. <laughs> I'm disappearing. Dan, before my legs go, I need you to get your father and get this picture. Trish, my name is Dan. I'm from the year 2018. <laughs> you need to fuck Gary Soder or I won't live. I have to take away your guitar playing. That's what I live for. I had to come back in time. And by the way, I'm going to need you two to fuck to Huey Lewis. <laughs> and by the way, that's not necessary. Just a little button I'm putting on the whole thing. I just get, that's a little, my own flair. <laughs> that's the old DS flair I'm living on it. I'll see you in 2016 when I get you that new washer. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta get the Blahoo's back together. Is Huey back on the road? Oh, he's never off the road. You can't keep that dick in one town. No way. <laughs> if you do, it'll cause permanent damage to the f foundation of the city. What's the status of Eddie Vedder's dick, Lou? I bet you've heard stories. Eddie, it's gotta be a rumor mill. We just, it's gotta have a mule. But you just you think said, so? They always say it's like Axl Rose. They say has a small dick. You just said that he's five foot two. A lot of those short guys. Got he's not ones. five two. That's not true. I stood next to him at Bonner. Remember, he's my best friend. Oh, yeah. Well, Remember? you're tall. They made out. Yeah. Well, he's about as tall as Bruce Springsteen, who's also a little guy. I mean, how tall? Like, 5'6". Dude, I mean. that ain't 5'2", man. I'm 6'3". He's fucking... He's 5'7". He's... Oh, you know what? He's pretty short. He's little... Like, he's... Don't you go back on me, birthday boy. He's not <laughs> as short as Prince, but he's... he's, he's... Prince is dead, Lou. It's... Prince is dead. Yeah, a small yeah. coffin. Prince is only four inches tall. Ass to fucking dick on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been long enough. Five, seven. <laughs> February 26th. Huey Lewis in the news in Staten Island. Dude. When is it? February 26th. We're all there. What day of the week Fuck. is it? Fuck. That's a weekend. Sunday. A Sunday? Oh, I'm going to be back. It's I'll be almost back. Almost 100%. It's 100% positive. If you're in the New York area, Huey Lewis in the news, February 26th. Let's black out our first Huey Lewis concert. All Blahuis, black, Latino, <laughs> Asians, natives. Hispanics. Hispanics. That's it. Wait, it was Hueys. Blacks, Latinos, Asians, blah, Native Hueys. Americans. Native Americans. Blonde Hueys. Blonde Hueys. The Blonde Hueys. Yeah, dude. I'm yeah. fucking there. Black, Latino. Wait, what's the H? I'm flying back from Sacramento. What's the H? Because Latino. No. No. We covered that with Latinos. I'm not giving Hispanics two. Why not? Blonde Hueys. Each get one. Black, Latino, why not? What was the A? What was the A? I don't know. Uh, Asians. Oh, Asians, so right. We, yeah. We had... Uh, Native Americans. That's yes. it. The Blonde Hueys. February 26th, Staten Island. Yes. Let's make it happen. Let's play. Are they headlining or are they opening for someone? Are they Mike Fanoying it or are they headlining? <laughs> yeah. It's just listed, I know it's listed as a Huey Lewis concert, but what's going on for real? Who's closing? Is it really Tesla? Is it the, is it the Buffett? <laughs> is, it mad, is it mad season? Oh, I love it. <laughs>
With that black guy from Allison Chains lead singing? <clears throat> now he come to fuck a rooster. It's the heart of rock and roll. I watched The Voice with my Nana, and they covered that, and it made me really upset. Rooster? No, that would be awesome. No, they covered uh, Heart of Rock and Roll. Oh, like, I was going to say, somebody covered Rooster on one of those singing shows? That would be like, such a sad song. <laughs> this is about my... This is about... Uh, it's not about Lane Staley. It's about... Uh, who's the guitar? Jerry Cantrell's dad in Vietnam. Yeah. So it's Walk like, in time. Machine. This is Blake Shelton. Someone's outside. It looks like your daughter. It is. Could be your daughter. Is it your daughter? I think it is. Yay! It is oh, your daughter. She's wearing so much makeup for no reason. Hi, everybody. Hey, some. Oh, who's that? Who's that ringing the doorbell? Oh, is that the Okersons? Hi. Mwah. Do you know who Huey Lewis in the news is? Oh, okay. God. He's a band from when you were a child. He's not a band. He's a one-man band? Goddamn right he is. You oh, is any? there a Huey Lewis in the News without Huey? Is, do, can you think the news could just hit the road? How many uh, How right. many local... Or how, local? How many... Marilyn Manson. How she many wore Marilyn Manson shirt. No, how many... Are, no, it's my birthday. Yeah, but she also asked me who's she the first time I said, <laughs> would you like to go see Marilyn Manson live? I don't blame you. I think I said the same thing in sixth grade. You didn't that. mean that. You didn't mean that at all. I didn't mean that. It's my birthday. Do not attack. I you won't. can build up. You're right. I think Marilyn Manson's an excellent artist. Lou, do you feel some sort? You feel like like an affinity towards Seattle, right? Yeah, I would. I would live there. You'd live there? Yeah, I like. Have you been there? Yeah. How many times? Once. I'm there in January. Plug. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Why don't you bring Lou? We could live there (laughs) instead of free. (laughs) Lou, do you want to? Lou, do you want to go? It's gonna be the ending of White Fang. Or we're like, you live here now, Lou. I want to be with my people. You live here now. Bring Lou and just yeah, just set him free. This is no longer your home. It's time for you to cross over. <laughs> oh. Peace awaits you there. Lou, you must have 7,000 drops from that call the other day. It's, is it more than intelligent minds can handle? Get out of my house, you fucking whore! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It doesn't even make any sense. Get out of my house, you fucking whore. He wasn't even saying it to the uh, host. Speaking the of, ghost. Wait, speaking of uh, Seattle, I think we have... Uh, or is... Oh, let's take she it after the first the break. After the first break. Should we take a break and then come back with the call? Not yet. Let's not take a break yet, but let's do it after the first break. Hey, you know what? Who knows where it's going to go? It's your birthday, and we're going to do whatever you want. You want me to fight Jacob? I'll fight Jacob. Will you fight Jacob? Just you, know, you know what I'd like? Hmm. I'd like you to have maybe a nice blazer over that hoodie. Can I borrow yours? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't bring one with me? But Will I, it fit you? I don't know. I was saying Seattle's a really awesome, nice place, but I, see, I could see it getting old quick, that fucking everyday rain. It really is. I like Everyday it, rain. I, I think I kind of like that. And rain every day? I don't There's know. no way you mean you like that. It's, it's my least favorite weather. It's my favorite weather. Rain? I mean it. Why? You like to curl up with a fucking book in a windowsill? No, but I like to sleep on the couch with a blanket. That's no, badass. I know, but I mean, like, then what? What about when you want to go outside? You just walk in the rain. Oh, that's to speak, that's to speak of a non-smoker now. Yeah. That's what's going on. I don't have to go outside to smoke. I have to go outside, my feet get out, and you walk back inside the hotel, and your feet are like... Whoosh, whoosh, yeah, that whoosh, sucks. Whoosh. I used to just smoke inside when it rained. Oh, see, I can't do that. I know. You were a consummate bachelor guy. That's what it was. No, I was just a rude roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I was just you a, say Vecchio used to come home, and you'd just be ripping butts on the couch, like, Sup, brah? I'm watching another episode of The Wire. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, cool, man. And you start complaining, like, watch it with me, man. You're like, in the middle of season three. Dude, watch it with me. So deep. That's McNulty. He's <laughs> me. <laughs> you got to over-explain it to everybody. Yeah, he's me. That's fantastic. Lou, sweats. we're going to get you out there. You're getting the sweats? You're not feeling good. I'm not feeling good at all. You and, you and Lou are both fucking under the weather. I didn't breathe on either one of you, so don't worry. You want Isabella, want Isabella to jump in? You want her to take the wheel? You want to you you take, take this baby sticks? for a ride? You want to be on the bonfire? You want to run the bonfire? She just say, yeah. You know what's great, though? She'll have, she'll have great She's... topics. Because like, what's funny about Isabella is, is uh, when I go on the road sometimes, Thursday or Fridays, when I'm uh, just like farting around during the day, she'll call me when she's on her way home from school, taking the trains, and I just get like great, like freshman and high school girl stuff, like about her friends and everything. She goes, "God, that girl's always complaining. She's such a whatever." Just like talking to me like a girl. Like I just find myself twisting my hair while she's yeah. saying, "I'm like, oh, she what a has gross, always been a bitch. What a gross ass bitch. You need to get away from her. What a gab. I would love to watch you do have high school girl talk with your daughter. And another thing, he's tripping if he thinks he's not gonna follow. You're gonna follow him on Instagram, and you're not gonna follow him back. And then that's just like great. Is that what you guys talk about now? The okay. gram? Oh, yes, it is. The gra- I don't I don't Snapchat. really use Instagram anymore. Oh, what's the new, what's thing? The new thing? Snapchat. Okay. Now, get off Snapchat. Why? Because someone's going to eventually send you a picture of their dick. I don't want it. 
I think that's a guarantee in yeah. the Snapchat. I think that's in the bylaws of Snapchat. Now, Greg, you're only going to get seven seconds of it, but still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's gone. No, I talk to Isabel on the phone. I usually lay on my bed with my feet up, like my hand on my thing. I'm like, what did she say now? I thought you guys were besties. I thought you guys were cool. Do you go, Do you talk to your dad about that stuff? That's awesome. It is. If I don't pay attention to her friends, I'll be like, isn't that your friend? She's like, we've hated each other for months. Yeah, you're moving at a very fast <laughs> social rate right now. What was the one? You gave a great, like, a great reason. Simone? Yeah, your friend Simone. I'm like, I thought you guys were friends. And she was like, she always go, She always comes over and then she'll be like, when we suggest to do something she doesn't want to do, she's like, I can't. I, I have a migraine. That's what she um, does. It's so. Isn't that what she does? It's so um, but, annoying. Isn't a mi- child? But isn't a yeah. migraine a great excuse for a child to get, I can't. I'm PMS and hardcore. Uh, I just had a hysterectomy, but maybe I can get back. Oh, you. I'd love to, but I, until I get this hip replacement, I am no good on the court. First off, John wants me to pay my own health insurance now. The kids are like, how old are you? Are you a 1920s 15-year-old? Well, I have to work down in the coal mine, and then I have to go to the seamstress. Store. Oh, my black lungs really hitting me hard. But good news is I'm eligible for the army to go fight in the Great War. But Isabel's got a great like maturity to her speech sometimes, where she's like, "It's like if you want to go home, just go home. Don't give the migraine excuse. <laughs> That's great. That's a great thing. <laughs> migraine. That's yeah, not a even very, a headache. That's a very mature thing. I have a migraine. I say, like, oh, I can't. My, my deviated septum is starting to bother me. I, get <laughs> yeah, I did way too much blow when I was eight. <laughs> it collapsed one of my nostrils. It's funny because when you're young and you use uh, big words sometimes, you really can pay for it. Oh, yeah. I remember one time my friend was like, I don't want to go there. I was like, Jason, stop. His name is Jason Boyle. Shout out to Jason Boyle. But we were in like eighth grade. and I was like, stop being such a martyr. And he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and all my friends on the bus were like, what the fuck did you just say, Soda? And I was all, is that a word with a T-Y-R in it? Are you a m- martyr? <laughs> oh, you lost your own confidence yeah. in it? Oh, uh, completely so deflated. Stop being a martyr. Stop being a... I get, by the way, as an adult, that happens to me. It happens to me daily. Where someone will go, that's not a word. And I'm, I'm like, like you're, they go, that's such a convoluted answer. But you lose it and it goes, that's a really convoluted, <laughs> yeah. convoluted oh, answer. That's a hypothesis. Con- that's a hypothesis. Convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hypothesis. hypothesis. <laughs> we should give you some adult problems you can tell your friends that if you don't want to hang out with them. You're like, ugh, I have my my synapses are not... Wait, I was, <laughs> sciatic nerve. That's what I was thinking. My sciatic nerve hurts. <laughs> I have synapsy in my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I have my, oh, don't, guys. My sciatic nerve is really acting up. I can't go walk. Do you guys go to the mall still? What do you guys do? We walk into town. You walk into town? What are you guys in town? Horse thieves? <laughs> <laughs> well, me and my group of badasses and ensemble, we're the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> we're going to steal some peanut chews from the general store. I'm going to get some rock candy, then maybe knock over that saloon. Maybe a bit of honey. Oh, that's Isabella and the ladies. <laughs> and they're dusky late. Wait, will you guys just walk into town? Well, because... Like, right from the school, it's on Northern Boulevard. Okay. So if you go down, there's like a whole bunch of stores. Can you not give your exact route you walk every day? I'm super vulnerable at this corner. I'm super vulnerable. Mom's at work. Dad's out of the city. And I'll tell you this. I don't have peripheral peripheral vision. I see. I did it. I did it with the word. You don't have preferential vision? Preferential. Peripheral. Peripheral. Peripheral vision. Start it over. Peripheral. Peripheral. You can just come up on me on a corner, and I won't even see you. Okay, I, I, I want you guys to know this. Every time that uh, Carla watches me correct Christine on something dumb she says, or if I have to correct any of my friends in front of her, Carla loses a little more respect for all of you guys, because Carla thinks I'm dumb as a brick. And we used to get into... Carla, he is the smart one in the group. No. so She's dude, a lawyer. She is a lawyer. But, dude, let me tell you something. She litigated that ass whenever you slipped up? Like a, <laughs> I don't know why. You know what it is? Carl Okerson versus Jay Okerson in the case of wrong word, wrong time. Right? Literally, <laughs> literally, my girlfriend before uh, Carla was my girlfriend Cheryl. Yeah, I know. Who was borderline retarded in the actual medical sense. Right. And uh, so I, <laughs> that makes you look way worse. Yeah. <laughs> that you're just poaching it. You're like, hey, come here. Yeah. Hey, just Isabella's what's age. Up? No, <laughs> everyone's doing this right now. No, everyone's come on. doing this. No. We'll just tug it a little. Oh my Christ, she was Isabella's age Ew. when I started dating. Ew. God, I love her. Oh no! No, 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 no! Jay, you're ble- Jay, don't move. You're bleeding out of your ear. Uh, it's happening. It's am happening. I fire? Am I? Am I the guy, the dad from Firestarter? Yeah. I'm no. using my powers. No, your no. powers. No, Jay, your hair's all going back to one shade. But she it's was all changing. She was. She was dumb as a brick. 
And then I met Carla, who was like, you know, NYU grad, academic, going to law school. And like a dummy, because I thought it would be fun. But she would remind me, she would always get, she was like, for three years, when I would bring up, like, hey, you want to watch Jeopardy? Like, when we eat dinner and, like, we'll play Jeopardy, like, I'll keep score. By the fifth time we've done that, she'd be like, no. And I'm like, what? You don't just want to sit here and play a game? It's like, it'll be fun. It'll kill time. And she's Can I like, guess why? Why? Because you're not good at losing a Jeopardy. I'm not good at losing a Jeopardy. <laughs> no, Is that true? No. It was miserable. It was miserable. You I know played I said, you in video you know, games. How many times in the world a pencil was broken for me slamming it on a very hard table and going like, you just read faster than me. <laughs> at one point. At like, one, we, I, go, I go, if we played this game without looking at the screen and just hear the things, I'd fucking beat you every time. And then she would do that. And then and then month, and I'd forget. And then she'd beat me. And then a month later, I'd be like, hey, I'd always like, bring it up like, hey, it'll be fun while we play a little Jeopardy. And then by the time Isabel got to an age where she was like, Dad, you don't want to play Jeopardy with Mom. I'm like, oh, you guys both call me stupid. It gets to the point where Carla's taking a nap with her back to the TV and her arms folded, and she goes, what is uh, Granada? <laughs> like, oh, she got it again. Finally, you're like, let's play. No, Jay. I don't, yeah, no, I get it. I don't... Playing video games with them is... Uh, but the difference... tough. The, the, it's pro tough. the problem tough. is Worse. I'm okay at video games now. It's pretty no, tough. Really not. I'm okay. Thank you. You get pretty wound up, no. too. Yeah, absolutely. Ask yeah. Becky Owen about the other night. I went ape shit. You, you hurt your hand. hand. Yeah, hurt my hand. I punched the table. I'm an adult, Isabella. <laughs> I pay taxes, and I still punch my coffee table when I lose it, man. Oh, oh, <laughs> stupid dick. No, Becky, Why can't by you the way, just throw a ball, Colin Kaepernick? Becky, Becky, Becky Owen will be watching TV in his room, and I'll just go, fucking asshole. And he'll, just hear that. he'll just hear that from the living room. She's fucking stupid. The computer's ripping me off. <laughs> I think, yeah. Well, I, the best is blaming the computer when your yeah, friend we, is winning. We've both done that. I love we've that. Done that. He goes, well, I don't know, because my controller's not registering the dunk, know. apparently. Apparently, I can't slam dunk. Apparently, X is sticking on my controller. <laughs> what did you, like, eat, suck Jolly Ranchers and just spit them on this thing? Nothing works. You're not allowed to bring your own controller anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, did you ever have a friend that brought over his yes. own controller? But it was like a Mad Max thing. There was like twine wrapped around it and like a feather coming. It's like, what have you done to this thing? You just like, I've you made like post apocalyptic. Of, I've kicked a lot of ass with this controller. His cord had like barbed wire going around it. Yeah, I was never good at losing at video games. I told you that story where I punched holes in the wall and then had to cover it up with a poster. My mom didn't know until she moved out. Oh. And then I got a call, and I just hear Trish through her gritted teeth. She's like, I just removed the Jerry Rice and Steve Young poster, and there are three huge holes. My mom always paused when she was angry. Huge. Was your mom zero to 60? Fuck yeah. My mom's zero to 100. You, take her, you have to take her out in the Nevada sand flats and let her rip it. She, my mom goes so fucking fast. My mom goes, my mom goes crazy. Yeah, quick. That's because I feel you guys doing that back to each other for the, for different reasons. She Dude, goes, wild dog, she's like, she's wild like, dog Trish? She's like, I took down the Jerry Rice and Steve Young poster and saw the holes. And you're like, you took down my Jerry Rice and Steve Young poster. You guys are coming at each other you for the same thing. You are nailing what my childhood was like. You took down my Dude, poster? By the time it was just Trish and I, we would just like like two dogs circle each other. And if she was had a long day at work and I had a long day at school, we'd just like... <laughs> I, like she would be like, your friends came... <laughs> <laughs> she, your friends came over to the house today for lunch. You're like, yeah, they did, but I cleaned up after. She's like, you didn't Windex the table. <laughs> you didn't buy Windex. <laughs> Dude, that was 100% my mom and I when we were a kid. Oh, yeah, Fucking look at that. Boys. That's fucking absolutely great. We'll take our first break here. When we come back, we got a, a cool call waiting on the line here. Speaking oh, of West Seattle, as we said, uh, we're going to be talking to the infamous, the now infamous, Trainee Jamie is going to be on the phone. Right when we come back from this break, it's the bonfire. <coughs> That's smooth. Let's take it for a walk. You guys heard me and Dan talk about our sleep number beds and how much it changed our lives. Well, my sleep number setting is 75. Back up to 75, Danny. I couldn't do it. It's so firm. I like it a little bit firm. Um, Christine last night was like uh, 
fiddling around with it. She went all the way down to zero, and she goes, ooh, I think I like it. I couldn't see her, the Did middle of her like body. It? Yeah, it was like, it, it just, it was like a hammock. You just sunk into it. I'm it was gonna great. I'm going to do tonight because I'm sick. Her butt touched the floor. It That's was true. awesome. Okay. Uh, it didn't look awesome. Okay. Well, guess what? Our innovative friends at Sleep Number have now also created a pillow. Oh, that's why she was comfortable, because I gave her the pillow. You're a good man. It's so comfortable, from what I hear. It's everyone's new favorite, including Pristine's. And mine. And Dan. Yeah, you do love it. Uh, you're, you want to get them for everybody. I'm, for going, I'm going to. Yeah, I've heard great things, man. Uh, it's the uh, Sleep Number Comfort Fit Pillow. There you go, Dan. There's the name, so you can order it. Sleep Number Comfort Pillow. It's the perfect combination of soft comfort and comforting support. It features a unique fill blend of memory foam with a premium down alter- uh, with premium down alternative fibers, so it keeps its shape night after night, which I am watching happen as I make the bed. I told you, my pillow looks like a, like it was in a, like a monkey knife fight or something. It's just all like messed up. <laughs> um... The Comfort Fit Pillow, fill a bath. There we go. The Comfort Fit Pillow. Fit Pillow. The Comfort Fit Pillow is so comfortable, it truly is a must have gift for everybody on your list. My seat number sitting again, 75. God knows where Christine's at. She vanished. There's just one place you'll call. Uh, there's only one place you'll find the Comfort Fit Pillow at a sleep number store. Right now, you can buy one, get one 50% off. Now that's a deal right there. So, Dan, you said you want to buy somebody too. That's yeah. It's only going to cost you one and a half the price. Make sure you check out all their great gifts for smarter sleep. You'll only find Sleep Number at any of the 500 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find one nearest you by going to sleepnumber.com and be sure and tell them Jay and Dan sent you. Again, that's sleepnumber.com. This is Rachel Feinstein, and you're listening to The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soderson. Yeah! Birthday music. B-Day party. Oh, I got to tell you, by the way, it's The Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Big J Okerson, Dan Soder. Uh, joining the party here, uh, along with Carla, Isabella, is indeed hilarious comedian, one of my best buddies in the world, and Dan's living boyfriend. <laughs> Goddamn right. Common law husband, bro. Right. Common law hubby. Mike Vecchione. Thank you for having yes. me, guys. Thank Man you for having sleeps. me to the party. Feet away from it. Can I say something? I'm surprised, and I hope Isabel doesn't get this joke. Carla's going to slide right out of that chair. It's just a, a hunk of hunk of everyone she loves in here. Dan Soder, Mike Vecchione. <laughs> the, the milk boy, Dan gross. Soder. Carla's always been hot in the pants. Did you say milk's gross? I said gross. What, milk is? No, Dad's comment. Oh, okay, yeah. You no. don't know what it means. Yes, I do. Okay, well. What do you mean? Inappropriateness. Okay. Is that all? But you could always make that uh, guess Isabella, if I say I no. hope you don't get it. Isabella, there is a, that is what we call in the business the tip of the iceberg with your father. <laughs> uh, That's my TV's clean. Uh, yeah, you are going to find out a lot more when you do some research on your father that he is eloquent when speaking about certain things. <laughs> like the, I play the violin. It sounds like somebody's headed for a timeout. I hate to chime in here. Mike, here's the great news. Way. Carla uh, currently uh, single in the game. You're single in the game yeah. right now, yeah? Yeah, oh, you want to take over my family, bro? <laughs> Dude, that is that's old time. That's old Western stuff. Dude, you want to take over my family? Yeah. I tasted Carlos cooking, so I'm way in. Hell yeah! Wait, nice what broccoli, did, what Rob. Did, Dan tasted the cooking too. It's unbelievable. Can I say when uh, when it's eight, uh, sitting Indian style and drinking a glass of milk? It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's the best. Mike had a glass of milk with uh, like like chicken cacciatore. It was, it was such a weird that's thing. That's delicious. Milk Italian food with milk. That's probably my favorite. <clears throat> when I think Carla, I think best broccoli rob in the game. Oh, Ooh. that's coming. Best from, broccoli rob in the game. That's coming from one of the two five 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 boys. So you better recognize that. <laughs> two five 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 boys. Don't throw around compliments like we that. ride or die. Mike got me for my birthday one of those wines that comes <laughs> in like so a, a like a wicker thing. It's like <laughs> that's Viking wine. No, it's, not, it's just super like Italian. It's, what is it? It's like it's Chianti. It's what they bring in the prison for poly for a. Uh, Big Pauly. Yeah. Mike's going to slice you some onions later with a razor blade. <laughs> Carla's got that because she's a lawyer for all those old timey gangsters. Whoa. Jimmy the Fritz and Smacky the Nose and <laughs> <laughs> Raleigh the Fingers. Stewie That's the Joint Roller. Uh, Raleigh the Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Uh, that Honus guy. the Wagner. Mike the Schmidt. <laughs> Steve the Kerr. Steve the Kerr. <laughs> Um, Dan came by today and treated me like uh, John Bender's dad from uh, from Breakfast Club. He got me a he got me a pack of uh, Marlboro Ultralight shorts. Yeah. I didn't know if it was he, didn't want, he wanted me to smoke a little less, which I'm okay with. Yeah, I want. I, want to... I like the sentiment. He's like, "Hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but just do a little less of it." <laughs> oh. Like, 
You know what happens in my house? I get a pack of cigarettes from Dan. He goes, hey, smoke up, Jay. <laughs> no, Dan, but what about you? <laughs> Fuck you. No, Dan, <laughs> what about you? And then I go, dude, I don't want to do the whole Breakfast Club thing. Dude, you go, oh, okay. I it's like you stutter. It's like your birthday. Okay. Actually, the best part was Dan just came in. He stopped by while I was taking a dump. We had a full conversation through the door, which I hated doing. Birthday dump. You didn't like that? I hate talking while I'm taking a dump. Do you like you make phone calls from the shitter? All the time. Oh, really? Not me. My mom. My I mom, reject phone calls. If I know. You are, if you are going to kidnap you. and murder Isabella, do it between 11 and 12 when I am just dropping heat. I have a certain specific set of skills, <laughs> except when I'm pooping. <laughs> if you have my daughter, Isabella, you're about to be taken, but describe it later. <laughs> he goes, Mid dump. He goes, I have a special set of skills. One of those skills. Special set of skills. One of those skills is hold on. This thing's coming out sideways. <laughs> Ooh, this one's got a point on it. Uh, have you ever had a have you ever taken a dehydrated dump? It feels like I ate three pounds of cat litter. It's so it's much coming out at once. But it's so hard to get out. Um you uh I, I don't know if I've talked about it on the show yet. You've revolutionized at thirty eight years old, almost thirty nine it turned out. Mm. <laughs> the way I wipe my butt after 30 some odd years. Sit down. Way, it, here's what I do. I take two, I take two, three swipes at it yeah. while I'm still sitting. That's all you need. But butt cheek flipped up like this. Yeah, presenting. Isabel, did your mom teach you how to wipe your butt? I hope, because I think I was telling you the wrong way. Oh, uh, what a touching moment in the Oakerson household. I want you to sit down. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, goes, please don't tell me you stand up like an animal and wipe your butt. Dan's a squatty potty guy, by the way. It's hard for a, it's hard for a man to look at his daughter and say he was wrong, but uh, I was wrong. I told you the wrong way to wipe your butt. You, this is something you're going to learn right now. Your father's fallible. Yeah, Dan is a squatty potty squatty guy. That's, potty even, that's, guy. Not even, that's not even the issue, though. My thing was... Bringing your knees up. Listen, it's all about he, technique. It is. It's about the squat. Well, but, it's funny when I... But my, my technique on wiping, until we had a conversation on the air about it forever, is like, hey, why does it take you 17 flushes to finish wiping your butt? Because I just... I would I got up immediately, like, you know, turned around, looked at my work. Like a gentleman. Yeah, I proofread my work. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> it, it's all there. It's all the yeah, uh, corn, nuts, yeah, that's, hey, hey, that, turkey meatloaf. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> you have a you have a clipboard. Okay. <laughs> yep. All there. By the way, and not to say change subjects real quick, and I, the only thing I thought it was going to happen there from all that shit talk. If my birthday present today in this room could be if we could show the video of Bear Grylls biting into the grub worm, and then you get to hear <laughs> through Carla retching yeah. the blarfs. We call them the blarfs. She gets. It's my. It makes. Isabella laughed till she almost pisses her pants, and it really rips me to pieces. It's so goddamn funny. But anyways, you were saying you stood up. You're explaining to Vicky. I used to stand up, right, and just go from there. And I was like, man, I guess I don't know what. It, I go, maybe I'm a big guy. Whatever it is, I feel like there's just dump all over my butt cheeks and and like. I, it's, it was like probably three flushes before I got to butthole of wiping. That's three, so three flushes much. of wiping? Huh? Three? F you wiped and threw it away three times? Three times. Oh wow! Before I got, you might as well just hop in the shower. That's like you're trying to. It's like you're trying to buck, take a bucket of water out of a boat. Like, ha, 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 bailing? Ha, 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 there's a leak. Someone sprung a leak. I think my bottle has a leak in it. I'm bailing it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then Dan was like, and a couple people were like, "This, that's insane that you would do that." Like, that's why it's taking so long, because you're standing up afterwards. I'm like, but I, in my mind, I'm like, no, oh, the poop's all in my butthole. No. And then, now what I do is I just, I, I flip up, I pop a cheek up. Yeah. <laughs> three, right. three strokes with some wipes, and then I get up, and it's maybe like three, four more wipes. And I'm telling you right now, that's and I, and I go, And I that's go, cut down tremendously. Yeah. But I go deep. I go deep, too. Look, look, so. look, look, look. Is this Bear Grylls? Oh, this is Bear Grylls? Watch this it. The best. You have to watch it. <laughs> well, you got to get a microphone near your mom. That's what I mean. <laughs> no. Yeah, you guys got to judge it. No, you got to wait till he finds the mom. The rhino beetle lava. There. Rhino beetle lava. You can just eat them. This is the it grossest roar. video ever on YouTube. When but Carla cooked, can't hold it in. a delicacy. <laughs> and at this time of year, there's plenty of them here. This guy looks a pain. No wonder they fry them. These are, this isn't the problem. He pulls out one that looks like a cartoon. Ugh. Ready for this? He's like, look at oh, this look bitch here. Oh, look at this nasty uh, slut. This one's a big oh, old bitch. Oh, oh, fuck you. This one. Get near the microphone, Carla. A very. You gotta see what it does, Dan. Time. 
Christine, you'll put this out, obviously. Uh, follow us at the Bonfire SXM. <laughs> for a week after this one. Do it! Wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, it's oral. Pounds Carla never pounds. throws up, but she almost <laughs> does. <laughs> more protein than beef or fish. Yeah, that's bad. Perfect survival food. That's bad. Hey, Carla, before wow. you flip out, it's more protein than beef or fish. <laughs> <laughs> no hope of becoming a butterfly. Oh, look at this one. Look at it. Hey, Carla, if you're watching, check this out. <laughs> After a good CrossFit wad, it's probably the best thing for you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We're here with you, sister. We're here with you through your pain. Do you? Are you a gagger, like a retro like that? Um, no, I'll just... I Is Andy gagging? That's it. It's horrible. Is that right? Merkface, I got you. <laughs> Do we just find out that Merkface and Carla are retch buddies? Yeah. I didn't expect a jizz shot. Not Lou. Lou's wow. done that for fucking sustenance. Lou goes, I... I, I, I <laughs> oh, God, that almost just made me throw up. Right. Lou's like... Lou's like <laughs> Who's like, put a little mustard on it. I know. Yeah, Lou goes, well, I ate one of those in Wrigley when I was seeing Mike Pearl Vecchione Jones. serves sounded... it with a nice Chianti. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Vecchione goes, oh, yeah, that's like my mama's pasta fajoule. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Angela got say. <laughs> your, sound like effects, you. your sound effects in here are almost too good. Yeah, well, yeah, great. Say. They're all from life, man. They're all from life. Wow. It's all um, real life shit. This is a different studio, isn't it? We got to take It's our studio. Don't be, don't be fooled by all the fugal sang remnants. Yeah. <laughs> this is our studio. Um, we had the phone call. We said we were going to take this. Is like This is pretty cool. So we, I told the story on Monday of Tranny Jamie. The male to female... Transgender, transgender fan of the show. fan of the show, big fan of the show, who just got obliterated and had and went on a wild tranny adventure that night. Was some of which involving me seeing her balls and panties. Were they what kind of panties? Oh, I don't remember, man. I was really focusing on the nuts. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just wanted you to paint a full picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, you just wanted to know if it was something, <laughs> something light and fluffy. Oh, I could describe her bag like a motherfucker. Well, I mean, all bags are all bags. Bags are bags are bags. You I bet if we true? did a ball lineup, Christine couldn't tell the difference. We <laughs> study my bag. I I don't think bags are that important. I bet if I looked at every bag in this room, I could tell you whose bag is whose. You think you could? Absolutely. We'll do a bag lineup. Not when you're here, obviously. When your wife, when your ex-wife and daughter aren't here. Isabel, you could be part of the silent auction happening outside. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Gate start. <laughs> um, um, on the line, for all the way from rainy Seattle, Lou, your favorite hometown because you love Pearl Jam and trannies. It's Tranny Jamie. Tranny Jamie, you on the line? Hey, guys. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Uh, first and foremost, uh, nice to meet you. Second of all, I am... Lovely to meet you, too. I'm so sorry about your DUI. <laughs> nope, not a DUI. Yes! Oh, they told us it was a DUI. What was it? Wrong. Nope, it was a assault against Renee, apparently, in the fourth degree. Assault? I, when I fell, I apparently clipped her ankle with my heel. So Wait, what? Who? Against my own girlfriend. She pressed charges. No, she didn't. Someone called it in, and the city did. So oh. they tried to get, like, a no contact on us. Really? That's yep. hilarious. That's I mean, it's terrible, I guess, actually. Your girlfriend's a doll. <laughs> exactly. You guys were both so cool. Wait, oh, so the city just up by a DUI. What was that? Someone told me you got picked up from, on a DUI. I was hoping yeah, you weren't. No, driving. someone, like, right a block away was getting picked up for a DUI at the gas station, I guess. And we were across the street of the world market. Whoa. And they can tell that you were and you got not caught. taking any shit. Yeah, you got a fourth. That's weird that the city assigned a fourth degree assault. We have our uh, bonfire legal counsel in here. Is that something? <laughs> oh, yes. Come yeah. on. Is that something that can happen in I New York? I thinking about actually using Jay's statement. Just, they're going to have a little bit of a problem if she doesn't want to, the victim doesn't want to come in and give them any information. It's her girlfriend. Yeah. But they have that here. That, that's the issue with uh, domestic violence. Like if the wife Renee won't actually, charges, the husband won't. There it is. She actually had to come in to fight the no contact, so they know she's on my side. Did you get taken to jail? Yep. Oh, the whole weekend. Wow. Does Jamie have a case out of this? You mean like sue I the mean, city? Yeah, like can she sue the city? Can she get out of the assault? No. Well, those are two Ms. separate Vita, things. Get out of the assault, please answer don't the question. The city. Okay, so you can get out of the assault, Jamie. <laughs> this is this is our uh, bonfire legal counsel. We go, you know. Wait a second. You were in jail all weekend. Now, do they put you in... Now, here's great questions. I'm so, and I love that it's you, Jamie, only because you're so cool and open about everything. Would they put you in the, in the mail cell, I assume, yeah? 
Nope. They gave me the option. Hey! And you, went, and you went to the female that's, cell? That's progress. Yeah. Oh, you just but crushing ass all weekend? Girl, I had to go into the crazy girl section. Oh, they didn't let while. you go with the regular girls. They made you go with the crazy girls? Yep. They made you go Bad Girls Club? Yeah. Like, you're the new bitch. We're going to drag your mattress out in the hallway. Girls interrupted. <laughs> Tranny Jamie and a bunch of cholas. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> great. Uh, They're like, Psst. Pretty much. Really? Yeah. Screaming all goddamn night and smearing windows all over their cell windows. Oh, wow. Sm what were they? Sandwiches on their fucking yeah. cell windows. They're smearing what? Sandwiches. Like sandwiches. One of them might have been shitting. Just... That's great. The guy that the guy that <laughs> the guy that makes the sandwiches in jail goes, "Oh come on! I spent three hours today doing that." They're like, "Fuck you, sandwich guy! You was a bitch, sandwich guy!" He goes, "I gotta make all those again tomorrow. It was tuna. That's a treat on Thursday." Well, they were in there for like ten minutes. It's not like they were doing hard time, right? No, no, whole That's weekend. A whole weekend. Oh shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I, Mike, I'm sorry. Mike Vecchione could do that on his head. I don't know why it comes from a long lineage of the family. Yeah. <laughs> Vecchione's in no, the Costa Nostra. They'll take care of him if he goes behind bars. Now, no, Tranny Jamie, do you keep your fucking mouth shut? Because that's always rule number one. You keep your mouth shut. You get a nice Chianti on Christmas. <laughs> have your girl, have Renee bring in a block of cheese. We want some stuffed manicotti tonight in the prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> Those girls were actually cool. I gave them my number because one said she was going to give me a dress when I get out. All right. She Picking up that. dresses in jail. That's, That's like the new fashion that. line. <laughs> but wait a I second. got this one in county lockup. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question is, are you... Now, I wonder... Uh, Carla, this might be a question for you. If I get arrested, and you were there when I got arrested one time, and I did not enjoy that day and a half or whatever it was, that full day I spent in... Day and night, I guess, right? That I spent in jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hated it. Could I possibly next time just say that I'm transgendered, but this was like boy day, and then say no. that I prefer to be in the, in the women's one? I don't think that's how transgendered works. I don't think. Kind of seems like you could. I, he said it kind of seems like you could. Really? I, I feel kinda, like you'll just end I up mean, by yourself. I don't want to be by myself. I want to be with those badass bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, put me in Bad Girls Club. <laughs> no, dude, no. They scream all night, and you only get an hour out a day. Did you see any fights? Um, no. No, no, no. We're all locked by ourselves, except, you know, the good behavior girls. I got to come out with them the last day. Did you see any nudity? Actually, one chick. Hey! All across from the shower for some reason, so I got to see her whole lap. Was it nice, or was it like... Was it was it nice or was Super it a prison nice, mess? Actually. Really nice. Like, yeah. like cinematic. One like, of the cuter ones. Well, if it was cuter. that nice, you probably wouldn't have been arrested. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it was like, <laughs> so it was like Cinemax jail nice. Kind of, yeah, dude. Like a sudsy <laughs> lockup. <laughs> like, like a red Dave shoe diary. Yeah, yeah a, good, a good Dave Ducone. Red shoe diary lockup. That's fucking fantastic. Yeah, Jamie's awesome. Jamie's going to, I tell you, one of the most industrious ideas I've ever seen in my life. Not industrious is the wrong word there. I was trying to use a big word. I'm going right back to where we were. <laughs> one of the uh, most creative ideas ever. Going to make a mold and then make a toy out of his own weenus before he... I'm trying to clean this up half for my daughter. Uh, so after gets the surgery, can, can still have like a, a memory of, you know, the thing. Yeah. I thought he was, you were going to say he was going to market that to anybody who wants to have surgery, so then after you can just use it on yourself. Oh, well, you want to hear, I told, yeah, you, the I told you the ultimate bummer, getting rid of Something. it, getting rid of that thing, seven inches. Ooh. I know, it bummed me out. Yeah. There was an Indian guy on the audience, and I asked if we can try to both touch him at the same time and say, and say like, another you, or whatever it is, where maybe I could become, we could become each other's pecker. <laughs> it's, like when you meet a, it's like meeting a tall guy that doesn't like to play basketball. <laughs> yeah. We were like, hey, stretch, what do you play, four or five? He's like, I, I don't enjoy basketball. Yeah, not even swimming. And, you're, and I, my always next guess is swimming, and nothing. I, I play the piano. <laughs> That's kind of um, why I felt I had to stick to this joke, though. Is because like I've got a decent one, so yeah, fuck. and that's kind of comedy gold. So getting rid of it though. Oh, you're not getting rid of it. You are though. No, I'm gonna get rid of it. Mm. And yeah, I feel like I have to do the whole dildo thing because it is fucking hilarious. And yeah, and it, I and give I, a pretty good piece. I said on Monday it might unlock a space-time continuum. 
Well, I said I, 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 the option. idea was if you turn it, you got to when you put it inside, you got to twist it until all the inside <laughs> veins and the veins on the toy line up, and then it, it opens. It's like it's like the Hellraiser puzzle box. It opens a portal. All the chains come out and grab her. <laughs> wait, that wait. So that wasn't. Yeah, a I joke. wasn't too drunk to remember the show and that. Fortunately, no, you were great at the show. Absolutely, you just got a little too hammered there at the end, which you know it happens. It happens to the best. Oh yeah, yeah I actually that's a, blacked out when you bought me the sixth and final double shot. Oh, wow. so Jay was the show. reason it happened. It was my fault. Everybody... <laughs> no, I shouldn't have taken it. Everybody who worked at the club the next day was thought, since we all walked out together, that I went back and watched you and your girlfriend. Which I would have. But... <laughs> but... They're locked training up. Jamie went down. <laughs> When the, oh God! Don't show, yep. Jamie. Have you surgery. have you watched videos of the surgery you're going to get? Yeah, unfortunately. Terrifying, right? Yeah, cool, kind of. If you do it, it, if you do it awake, we'll give you a hundred dollars. What do they do with the What do they do like, with the balls? Yeah, that's Jamie. like medieval. They just they because they just took them off. We're watching the video of, of how uh, transgender surgery is performed, which, by the way, pioneered in Trinidad, Colorado, uh, growing up. It was a really big. It was a really big thing called going Trinidad. It was like a saying wow. in Colorado if someone was transgendered, because they performed the surgery there. You can actually look that up. I, now it just cuts and folds back. Oh wow, it is a very it complicated. Why are they cutting so slow? Because they cause they oh, want to make it erotic. Well, it's a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to remember enjoy every piece? I don't know. Do you when you cut a turkey on Thanksgiving, you just slice it up? No, you, you do it for show. We just hatch it in that thing. No, that's why you take nice long carbs. You go. Who wants Wait, the skin? <laughs> As he's cutting open the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody like the skin? Dark meat. Oh! Oh! Uh, Take it back. Not that bad. I mean, come yeah, on, no. Jamie. They just flip the dick inside. Out. <laughs> inside, yeah. It reminded me of Benicio del Toro and Usual cool. Suspects. I flip you. I flip you for real. I said I asked that question. I was like, it seems like a surgery is so complicated for something. It looks like if you just like pushed on the pee hole really hard, you just shoot it back and just get the same effect. It's a Looney Tune surgery. Where you just <laughs> a lump. Punch him in the back, and the dick comes through the back. Boing. <laughs> Now, for a counterpoint, we invited Mike Vecchione here, who got the surgery the other way. Vagina to penis. Mike, your thoughts? Yeah. Painful? Were you awake the whole time? What do they do with the balls? Is my, do they take the ball back and you? <laughs> they go like this. Ball fight! <laughs> yeah, they throw it and somebody else has a loaded wiffle ball bat with the, with the wet newspapers. It, it breaks open like that grub. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that would kind of be a nice souvenir, to have them like, around your neck. Oh, oh, yeah. the, it sounds like a threat that like I'll put your balls around your neck. Yeah, oh, or, James, you get your nuts made in the earrings. Yeah, have them do. You know how they do shrunken heads? <laughs> 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 they, uh, and then they ask her, "There, I go. What's that necklace?" And you go, "From a different time." If you were Latina, I would tell you to keep him in a maraca. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That was when I was little, mijo. Mijo. <laughs> mijo. No. Where are your cojones? Your cojones, Harry. Oh, man, what a Ron vicious thing. Shit, make a trophy. Yes. But until the surgery happens, you uh, are having normal, hetero-style sexual relations with your girlfriend, right? I mean, yeah, I'm a lesbian who has the equipment to do it this way there you uh, go wow are you gonna be yeah are you gonna be and i know there's a real thing when, when you get the surgery you and the girlfriend are done is that gonna bum you as it gets closer are you gonna try to convince her otherwise you're just gonna respect it and be like yeah that's fine move on i've come to terms with it so yeah would, friends it's cool wow that's wow. i mean that's I a mean, deep... I respect her enough for what she's doing already yeah i, I mean that's um i mean that's pretty cool that you also are uh, you know while she's being in a weird way, I don't know. I, I have a lot of respect for Jamie that he's being this uh, that, she's, oh, yeah. that she's being this rational about. It. Oh, with, with yeah. by the way, with, with no judgment on it at all, Christine's baffled by the the girlfriends hanging in there for the just for the time for being. The ride, I yeah. don't think you'd want to get out now because it, I mean, it says, uh, Jamie, how long have you been with your girlfriend? For like four years. Almost. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Crazy. I mean, and, and this and this whole and the transition thing's only been a few months, right? Eight months. Yeah. yeah. Eight, Eight months. Wow. Was she, uh, what was the reaction when you told her? Was it just the anger, sadness? Um, no, just sadness, I guess, and confusion. She knew something was up. We'd been fighting for a minute. Yeah. But. And did you feel when you told her that, was it just like a weight off your chest? Was it just? Yeah. 
Totally. totally. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. it's great that you guys are approaching this rationally, and both of you, you know, seem like you kind of know what's going to happen. I mean, it's still going to hurt like a motherfucker, but... Oh, yeah, I mean that in multiple ways. By the way, you know, just the hormones are a slow process. So don't ask me how I know this. Boobs, even. Don't ask me how I know this, but for a lot cheaper and a lot less painful, you could just pull your bag up over your wiener and then put like a piece of tape in between <laughs> your nuts. Just grab some duct tape. Uh, sort of looks well, like. You go, hey, listen, I'd I'm fucking. I'd say I tuck well, but you saw my balls. Yeah. So. Oh well, I mean, you took a digger, dude. That was a. Re- I mean, ma'am, you that was a real. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, um, you fell so hard, you. But you said you were blacked out. That'd be so. great. Yeah. That'd be great if she was like, if Jamie was like, you, you want to see a trailer, and then just flopped it up. I was like, Shh, with duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? There you go. I mean, when she when she made the tackle on uh, on Renee, her girlfriend, it was. Like, what'd you say? It was like a. Oh, oh Terry Tate, Lawrence, office Lawrence, line, Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Uh, Terry Terry Tate, office linebacker. <laughs> that ain't your dick. That's my dick. Boof. <laughs> um, Jamie, you were super cool. Good luck with everything. So you're not going to be in any kind of trouble from this thing, right? Um, no, I think I'll get out of it. I might have to pay a little fine for the assault thing, but we, you know, got the no contact dealt with, so I think we're pretty good. Well, my, uh, my ex-wife Carla's here, and she always says, lesbian relationships, the <laughs> most violent. So, <laughs> there you have it. It's just uh, me tripping. Floppy, <laughs> floppy heels. Um, Jamie, you're awesome. Good luck with everything. We hope to talk to you soon. Dan's going to be out in Seattle. Yeah, come out to the show, I'll Jamie. There. I'm going to be at laughs. And we'll, we'll meet. You Can you show uh, Dan your nuts so where's equilibrium in the world? Thanks. He gets butthole. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. We'll be right back, everybody. It's the bonfire. Me- Oh, just change it up, beds on the fly. You've heard me talk about my sleep number bed and how it's changed my life. My sleep number setting is 35. I like it nice and You loose. went down now. Oh, it's great, dude. That's I'm a, way down. And I'm going to I'm going to go down to zero tonight. And see what's up. See if it helps helps me sleep with my sickness. Get down with the sickness. Now my innovative friends at Sleep Number have created a pillow that's so comfortable. It's everyone's new favorite pillow, including mine. But like I know I'm like reading that, but legitimately it's my favorite pillow. You've raved about this off air several times. It's unbelievable. It's a sleep number comfort pillow. It's the perfect combination of soft comfort and com- comforting and confronting. It comforting. Says, dude, it says confronting. Let me Look see. at that Let right there. Copy. It says confronting support. <laughs> I'm going to support you. I'm going to get in your face. Yo, you want to get supported or what's <laughs> yeah. up? So if you want confronting support, which it does say, it features a unique fill blend of memory foam with premium down alternative fibers, so it keeps its shape night after night. The, the comfort pillow. I love the fact of confronting. Confronting support. <laughs> Hey, a, do good in school. It's an intervention. I'll drive you every day. I don't care if we're out of district. Uh, the comfort pillow is so comfortable, it truly is a must-have gift for everybody on your list. There's just one place you'll find the comfort bed pillow, and that's at Sleep Number Store. Right now, you can buy one and get one 50% off. Be sure to check out all their great gifts from Smarter Sleep. You'll only find Sleep Number at any of the 500 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find the one nearest by you by going to sleepnumber.com, and be sure to tell them that Jay and Dan sent you. Again... That's sleepnumber.com. Go get some of that confronting comfort. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Does paying for channels you don't watch make you want to scream a four-letter word? Yes. Stop. Stop it. Makes me irate. Stop it. Just stop. It's time for a skinny bundle that gives you what you actually watch and not what you don't. Introducing the Flex Pack from Dish. You start with over 50 popular channels. You want more? Then add channel packs like Locals, Variety, Kids News. Don't watch. Don't pay. It's up to me. Call 1-844-CALL-DISH today or visit dish.com to sign up. The new Flex Pack from Dish. It's over 50 popular channels for just $39.99 a month with your first channel pack included. Add more channel packs like Locals, Varieties, Kids, News, and more for $10 a month. Get the skinny. Call 1-844-CALL-DISH or visit dish.com to sign up. Requires credit card. card, card, card. Oh, <laughs> you can't do it. It's impossible. It. Requires credit qualification to your commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. One TV included. Taxes and surcharge extras. Other restrictions. Credit. 
Last year, 23 million people. Dan, you ready for this stat? 23 Shoot. million people had delivery stolen from their doorways. What? And with more and more of us going online for holiday shopping, package theft has become big business. They're called porch pirates. Arr. Not to be confused with porch parrots. <laughs> hey, play cheeseburgers and parrots. <laughs> Get off my porch! Get off my porch, parrothead! Well, whether it's a porch pirate or a parrot head, these scumbags <laughs> walk up to your door when you're not at home and steal your packages. Well, guess what? A ring video doorbell can prevent this from happening. Hi, you scurvy Arr, beast. Get, get out packages. of here with your eye on your door <laughs> and me with my lack of eye. <laughs> Ring's wide-angle camera, built-in motion detection, and two-way speaker let you see and speak with anyone at your door from your smartphone. No matter where you are, you're instantly alerted. Give crooks the fright of their lives when you catch them in the act. And then... Who knows what? <laughs> hey! Hey, Porch Pirate! Oh, jeez! Are you oh. here? No! I'm in Cincinnati! I'm <laughs> seeing my girlfriend's mom! <laughs> I'm staying with my nan in Portland! But seriously, drop that package! Oh, but I'll fly back in three days and be so mad. <laughs> oh, boy. I really need that. It's my zit cream! <laughs> Give crooks to fry their lives when you catch them in the act. Let them know they're being recorded. The Ring Video Doorbell works on any home, and it's easy to install in just minutes. It's like a ring of security around your front door. Ring makes a great gift, and my listeners get up to $150 off when you go to ring.com slash comedy. I gave this as a gift, actually, to Carla. Did, um, did you set it up yet? Awesome. So the porch pirates are just going wild at your house. Oh, I might as well give out your home address, because that's it. Have at it. She don't care. <laughs> Treat yourself and your loved ones to peace of mind this holiday season. And guess what? My listeners, mine. I know Dan's here, too. Yeah, but these, I think they listen for me. Yeah. My listeners. Well, of course. No, our listeners get up to $150 off when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Save up to $150 today at ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Hey, what's up? It's Sean Donnelly, and you're listening to The Bonfire with Big J Ogerson and Dan Soder. I think Big J is cuddly, and I love Dan Soder's gravelly voice. I don't know where Jay went, because all we have is this robot Jay in the studio. Dan. Oh. Oh, nice to get. Mmm. Birthday jams all day on the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's the birthday boy, Big J Ogerson. Yay. In the studio, we have his family. Uh, the new family, the new American family. We have, of new course, his ex-wife Carla, his daughter Isabella, and his girlfriend Christine uh, operating YouTube. And the new American family, the two five 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 boys. <laughs> my common law husband. The Mike, modern family. Modern family, bro. Mike Vecchione in <laughs> yeah. studio. Mike Vecchione is going to be at Mojo's Comedy Club in Youngstown, Ohio, Friday, December 16th, and Saturday, December 17th. Get tickets at MikeVecchione.com and check big, check out Big J. It's going to be in California, first at the American Comedy Company in San Diego, Thursday, December 29th through New Year's Eve, and then at the Punchline, one of my favorite clubs in the entire world universe, uh, in San Francisco, Thursday, January 5th through Saturday, January 7th. Go get tickets at BigJComedy.com. Dan, you selfless bastard. Why don't we talk about you <laughs> crushing ass at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia on Thursday, December 29th through New Year's Eve. So, hey, if you can't make it across the country to San Diego, San Diego. you could always just swing down to Illadelph. Yeah, why don't you go to the nation, the First Nation's capital? And go catch the First Nation's capital. Go check out Soda at Helium Comedy Club, Thursday, December 29th through New Year's Eve. Which might be my favorite club. And you can get your tickets at HeliumComedy.com. I mean, your favorite club in the country is Punchline, so he's not, he's not, he's not very fun. Fond of helium? But come love, check him out anyway. I would go helium Philly number one. Number two is a tie between Punchline San Francisco and another. What's the other one? Comedy on State, Madison. Still haven't been there. It's great. I heard. It's but then nice. you got to be in Madison. Is it awesome there? Fucking That's Madison is town. great. Well, well, first off, you're drunk. Uh, is it yeah. covered in cheese? Fried cheese curds. Yeah. You ever had them? I've had cheese curds on the in. Canada a bunch. Yeah, fried cheese curds in Madison is unbelievable. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's unbelievable. There's a lot of good food and the people are all fun and they're all from Wisconsin, so they're super happy you're there. And the two sisters own it, right? Yeah. Yeah, their father. The father, yeah. Great you handshake. Been there, you been there? I was there, yeah. They're, like they're super drunk. They don't like it. There's a weird German. Did you find this? There's a weird German population there, so if you make any kind of Holocaust jokes at all, they get really 
tight and weird. Everything else is like drunk and fun, but if you make a German some kind I of a joke. I think you're mistaking uh, drunk and weird about it, uh, 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 quiet and weird, for quiet and focused on what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think the Hulk also happened again? He goes, well, I'm listening to your idea. <laughs> then I've heard it's been kicked around before, but uh, what is there like a GoFundMe or something more like is something kind of sussed out of it? Or? <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, if you mean you are... What's wrong? You guys offended? No, no, keep no, going. No, no, no. I'd like to hear some of your parts. Oh, no, what happened in your breakup? <laughs> I want to hear what happened in your last breakup. I would not like you to hear my master plan! <laughs> Um, no, no, how was the airplane food on the way over here? We were both here. <laughs> oh, so what's traveling like? <laughs> and your, from your perspective, we were both at the cellar last night. I went home because I was feeling under the weather, uh, hung out with one David Tell, who I think went on. You were about to go on, but he went on? I don't know, but I left. No, no, he, I was, missed you. he was supposed to be on before me, and, okay. uh, and then he came on stage with me for a little bit. That's what it was. But you said... What, it was what so goddamn funny. Yeah, last night. He, he, it's off the cuff stuff he said. He was like... He's like, Jay, are you celebrating? Or he asked me, he goes, you're Jewish, aren't you? I go, I'm, I'm half, technically, but because but, my mom's Jewish. Just, that kind of means you're full Jewish. He goes, oh, so do you only light half the candles on Hanukkah? <laughs> I go, yeah. He goes, he goes, what's your favorite day of Hanukkah? I go, uh, I don't know. I, I said something like the third or something. He goes, he goes, mine's the fifth. Cinco de Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> He really is the, he's one of the greatest comedians of all time. <laughs> Cinco de Hanukkah. That made me laugh so hard. I, it's, uh, yeah, he's fucking He great. also goes, he goes, now, he goes, he goes, Jay, you're a good looking guy. He goes, me, I look like the last guy you see before you see a tire fire. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, honey, we drove too far. <laughs> um, but then some, so a guy walked up outside. There's always crazy people around the cell, because it's in the West Village. So before I even go on stage. As soon as I this get must there, have been right as I left. Outside the comedy cell are Leonard Oots. Leonard Oots. Derek Gaines. Yeah. Um, outside Steve. Outside Steve. Well, Steve Fabricant. One of the best Steve people Fabricant. Of all, yeah, one of the best people dude. of all time. And um, maybe even one of the security guys, Mel, Mel. Mel and Steve were working last night. Yeah, but Mel was like so. floating around. Really wasn't right there. But we're just kind of sitting there talking. Christine was there. And we just like... We're all talking, like, over on the side steps. I'm off the steps, but mm -hmm. those guys are mostly on it. So a guy walks right up next to me. He's got a lot of tats. His hands have tats all over him. His neck has tats all over him. He's white dude. 30s, maybe? Christine, any thirties? 30s? Yeah, 35, maybe. Um, he's holding a bunch of, like, flowers, but it's great because it's not even, like, flowers. At least he's selling flowers, maybe. But it's not even flowers. It's like the stuff that goes with flowers. Oh, when you buy that flowers, you baby's breath. Bouquet, yeah, the bouquet filler. But, not just, but he had some baby's breath. He also had like the fake, like the plastic, like sticks with the berries on because, them. Because this is, and some of this is sage, <laughs> and uh, we have some paprika, <laughs> thyme, thyme. I got a bunch of good. These are all from my garden. Rosemary. Fun story. I am a violently outward, inwardly. Uh, I'm a gardener. <laughs> he, has, he has an Aryan garden. <laughs> yeah, bro. This is the most superior. Uh, these are superior chives. <laughs> so this guy comes up and uh, he's holding all that stuff and he goes, he's like, what's up? And he goes, he goes, you guys are smoking pot? And I was like, no. And he's like, yeah. And, and he's just standing there. He's like, yeah. I was like, no, like what? What do, what do you want, dude? And he's like, what do you want, dude? It was like that aggressive out of the gates. And Steve Fabricant's like, what's up, man? He's like, I don't know. You tell me what's up, dude. What the fuck are you going to do? It's like that aggressive right away. And I was like, Hey, dude, why don't you just beat it, dude? Just get out of here. And then I, I put, kind of put my hand on him. I was like, I'm like, dude, just go. It's like time to go. And he goes, whoa, man, don't put your fucking hands on me like that. I'm like, I am a premier sub-flower salesman. I'm like, dude, you're going to get, an like, I'm just, you're almost like, going, dude, you're going to get annihilated. Like, what are you yeah, doing? Like, this the is not good. And he goes, he goes, what, you guys are going to fucking do something about it? And I go, and then Mel just kind of walked by. I go, no, 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 there you go. He will. And those guys are great, dude. Especially those particular that that gathering of like the door yeah. guys. Mel is like, great, man. Yeah. I love, but all of them because Mark, here's the thing. Here's the off. thing, dude. This guy, like I was even bad. It was a stat pad for sure. I was even batting around. And I was like, I can just clip this guy real quick. It will <laughs> be over. Get a birthday knockout. <laughs> it will be. Over. And he looks like he looks a good part for a guy you knocked out because he's got the tats all over. Yeah. He wasn't like a, a a tiny guy or anything, you know. Yeah. But he but wakes I, up and criticizes your punch? Yeah. yeah. He's just, he goes, that, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, I, one time I caught a fucking right in county that hurt just a little <laughs> bit more than that. And that was when I was walked up, locked up with the ladies because I told them I was transitioning. But what I love outside, <laughs> out, inside That's, Steve, who's fucking a no, big daddy. Yeah. Huge. I mean, yeah. 
A huge guy. He reminds me of Blue. Yeah, yeah, from the Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just because he's just such a like a gentle soul. He's Carl, and you know all these people. Uh, outside Steve and Mel's are there, and these guys like every opportunity right there to even start doing like an aggressive like grab him, and be like get the fuck out of here, man. He just keep going like they're almost like they're like, they're like come on, man, come on, dude, just keep walking, just walk, dude, come on, yeah. just walk, just walk. And the guys like. And he's getting back in like Leonard Utz's face and all that shit. And like Leonard Utz is a big guy. Yeah, yeah. But he's but he just keeps going like. But I just love that their thing is not so much like even like that flexing. You've seen that bouncer before, yeah. like the flexing on everybody. Well, that's the tight t-shirt yeah, yeah. dude. And you're like you're like that's a tight t-shirt earpiece guy that works at like Tao. But like, don't you get that? Sorry, like, bro. The guys you don't get are, you don't get that sometimes those complex comedy clubs out when you're on the road. But I, got, I, and when they find out you're the comic, then they change. But for at first, you're kind of like like what? Can I help you? What's you up? Dude, that's, <laughs> what's that? you're, you're like, dude. I'm just looking for the green room on the comic. He goes, oh, you're the comic. Oh, what's up, dude? dude what's up, bro? That, <laughs> is, that is 80% of shitty comedy clubs bouncers when they go, yeah, sorry, sold out. I'm like, oh, we're sold out? And they're like, we are sold out. Uh, what's this we? And you're like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm Dan. I'm on the show. Oh, we? Oh, no, you're but part they go of the like collective this. now, motherfucker. Yeah, they go, wait, we're, you're on the show. Like, yeah, I'm headlining all weekend. And they're like, all right, bro. All right, well, nice. I heard a lot of stuff about you. Everyone seems to think you're pretty cool. I saw you're on the Double Dog, MTV2. Oh, all right. Get it, bro. Were you on the code or court? Both? Get in there. Code and the court. All right. This double Dog is the best. Um, so he's going up, but Leonard Utz, man, made me laugh so hard because he, like, Leonard wanted to hit him. That was the guy he was going at the most. Mm -hmm. And Leonard was funny. He just said such great lines because... The guy just starts like screaming in Leonard Utz's face. He's like, "The Italians used to run this fucking block." <laughs> the guy does have a point, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's, I mean, he does have a point. Flop. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you brought me in on this day. No, it's but. great. No, not at all, dude. Uh, outside, Steve has the best like retort for this in the sense of like. He's such a like, not a fighter guy. He goes, the Italians, and Steve's like, I remember that. I remember. What <laughs> but he goes, uh, he's in the guy's face, and he and he goes, he goes, the Italians let you fucking be here. You should know that. And Leonard just goes, fuck the Italians. He goes, go call him. Tell him the niggas here now. And I'm like, yes, get him, Leonard. That was great. And then the guy goes, and the guy goes, he goes, and the guy's like, you're weak. You ain't shit. If you guys want to deal with it, let's go around the corner and deal with it. And then Leonard he goes, he goes, you ain't shit. And Leonard just goes, I ain't shit. Nick, you selling flowers. <laughs> and the whole time the guy's doing he's holding a barrel, like a barrel of flowers. That's so funny. You can't start talking shit to someone when you're holding secondary rate flowers. <laughs> you don't even have the roses. You don't even have top flowers. You're bargain flower salesman. That's great. Mikey, what was the last physical conversation you've been in? That's I bet it was wildly violent and awesome. Go yeah. ahead. Do it for Carl. Get Carl's nips hard. <laughs> No, I can't even remember. Tell her about you being a big man, big man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, it had to be college. What was the thing? Yeah. Didn't you tell me? A, what was the thing you told me a story? Well, Could we I, talk about it on the air? I mean, yeah, I think we... Didn't we tell that story the first time you were on the bonfire? No, not at all. When he... When the guy at the bar called uh, your, yeah, called called your sister, girlfriend a called, your called girl, my girlfriend a pig. Called, called girl, I was gone. I was taking my sister home and I came but back. But was she... <laughs> Did she go down on your brajol while you were on the road while that yeah. trucker was looking? Yeah, bro. But when I went she to get in the door, she trusted. unlocked the door. So that oh, was, yeah. that's the. Uh, well, well, she, the she, pa she pa So she passed, she passed the uh, Sal the test. test. She didn't pass the Mario test. <laughs> so she. Uh, Dude, sunny, this, the sunny test. Dude, the best part is Vecchione tells the story is like, we're like telling stories about like, uh, scared of getting beat up or almost getting beat up. Yeah. And Vecchione's like, yeah, this guy, this guy called my girlfriend a pig and it made her cry and I was taking my sister home so I got back to the bar and she was crying and I told I she told my best friend was there and he was like look so I was in the bathroom somebody called her a pig I don't know who it was but it was one of these and then he started snapping and then we got thrown out of the place I can't so, see you getting thrown out of somewhere we got no, I didn't. He was. He started snapping because she was. He saw that she was really upset, and I was like, "Just tr let's try to find him." Oh, so you got and thrown out because of him it, blowing up, and then he he blew up, so we got thrown out. He's like, "I don't know what to do, dude." I'm like, and uh, I was like, "No, nah, you should just go home. You should just go home. You shouldn't get in any problem." So then I, she fingered the guy before we got thrown out, and uh, no, she didn't like finger him. What? In the no, butt. she didn't finger. Like, <laughs> That'll teach him. She goes, By "Who's the way? pig now?" <laughs> Goes, me, me. He did call me a butt, but I did really loosen up his BH. So. <laughs> I did dig around like a truffle pig in his butthole. Oh, they're actually together. 
They actually are together now. No. Yeah. Um, pig want to live in the stack. <laughs> I'm going to get in the mud, Piggy. Piggy want to get in the mud. So it's like uh, one of those bars where I knew a bunch of people in high school, but now it's all different people. I didn't know anybody, and he had a bunch of friends there. So we got kicked out. I told my friend to go home. I took her back to my place, which is like, uh, um, not like a half a mile away, and then drove back, and then just cut the lights in my car and just sat in my car and waited for him to come out. He just sat in his... He stake out him. He well, because if out. I was going to take a... Did I'm your windows a, fog up and then you'd have to put on the defroster to clear them up and then they'd go back to <laughs> foggy again? He's just listening to old Sinatra. I know this sounds like a Steven Seagal movie, but... My life, Budo, <laughs> dating some pig, getting into bar fights. She probably started the problem. Wait, man. What? What do you do when your friend's a <laughs> lunatic who gets you kicked out of a bar? Waiting for a fist fight, breathing through my nose, heavy nostril breaths, and a tapping on the steering wheel. Sitting in my Z28 with a LeBra on the front. I don't even, my car's so recognizable by description to the cops. Uh, <laughs> so the guys come out. So I just waited, but my whole psychology was if I take a beating. I don't want to take it in front of her, so I dropped her off and then came back. Because nice. I thought, I thought there's a lot of guys, so you it's crawl like, home there's a like, good chance I'm going to take a beating here. You should have crawled home, been like, you should see them. <laughs> Spin well, listen, listen to the rest of the story. So he come out and I recognize, and I'm like, all right, there it is. So then I, I just, I, I just, I don't even say anything. I just walk up and punch him in the face, and then, uh, and then his friend tries to grab me, I punch him, and I'm actually. He goes like this. He goes, <laughs> hey. Go for it. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you made her cry inside. Why don't you try making me cry outside? My ring's outside. Later, when you least expect it. Uh, you ever sat in your car and just waited for someone to come out, <laughs> and then you just walk up and hit them? What's the matter with you? I don't know. Did you, did you call Adrian a pig? Yeah, she don't like it too much. You got to take her glasses and hat off. It's a whole different person. It ain't about it. So you drop him. Now I'm, I'm, I didn't drop. I'm, I'm, I'm punching the guy in the face, and then the other guy grabs me, and then I start punching him in the face, and then everybody ru runs to the front of the bar, and I'm like, because there's a window, and I'm like, here it comes, dude. And then people came out, and I'm like, yeah, here it comes. I, I was actually surprised I was doing that well. It was two guys. I was like fighting off two guys, and then everybody came, and then they were real diplomatic, like. Dude, like they would start talking to me about like, dude, yeah, you please, like please, da, da, da. and then uh, you look like I kept, a wild man. <laughs> well, I kept swinging, and and then I heard sirens, and so I just ran to my car and. Thank you. In the middle of the a circle, they there. all have cattle prods. <laughs> like, ah, he's like, ah, I'm out of here. I'll take out of here. But I surprised. <laughs> I was surprised when the other guys came. Like they were being like diplomatic. Like, hey, dude, please calm down. Please they don't calm want none down. of that. But uh, it'd be great when it was I over. I thought it was. I thought it was done. When they were coming up, I'm like, ah, oh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fight all these. It'd guys. It'd be great if you took off your two of your you know, the two straps of your singlet like Ted R C D afterwards. <laughs> Who wants to roll now? Who's next, boys? Put him in the circle. This is my circle. Throw me more. More meat. More meat. More meat. He does the, he does the Zeus, uh, the wrist clap from No Holds Barred. Oh, you just got Carla so worked up. Isabella, <laughs> your new stepdad's so much cooler than your real dad. We'll take our last break, everybody. We'll be right back. It's, uh, and when we come back, we got a, a nice caller on the phone here, a friend of the show. All I'll say is, buckle up for Sticks for Noia. It's the bonfire, baby. Baby. Baseline. Let me ask you something, Jay. Does paying for channels you don't watch make you want to scream a four-letter word? Yes. Stop. Stop it. Right. Just stop. Stop. Time. I said he sound like a, like Nigel Bach. 
Tom, the character Tom Riley yelling, <laughs> yelling at a stop, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's not your home. It's time to cross over. Cross it's time over. for a skinny bundle that gives you what you actually watch. And now you don't, including the new Flex Pack from Dish. You start with over 50 popular channels, and then you want more? Well, then add channel packs like Locals, Variety, Kids News. Don't watch, don't pay. Call 1 844 Call Dish today or visit dish.com to sign up. The new Flex Pack from Dish. It's over 50 popular channels for just $39.99 a month with your first channel pack included. Add more channel packs like Locals, Varieties, Kids, News, and more for $10 a month each. Get the skinny. Call 1 844 Call Dish or visit dish.com to sign up. Requires credit, qualification, two year commitment, early termination fee, and e auto pay. One TV included. Taxes and surcharges are extra. Other restrictions apply. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. We are spiced up here. Coming to the radio series XM95, Big J Okerson and Dan Soder sitting with us. The extended family is Mike Vecchione, Carla, Isabella. Oh, God. oh, I thought that was going to be. I thought it was another, another part. It was so dramatic. Oh, man. What a birthday celebration. What a great birthday celebration. Big J, it's his birthday, and he's also going to be in California coming up at the American Comedy Company in San Diego Thursday, December 29th through New Year's Eve, December 31st. Then, of course, going to be at the Punchline, San Francisco, January 5th through January 7th. Get tickets at BigJComedy.com. What's not on there? So if you're in Toronto, by the way, tomorrow night I'll be doing shows at Comedy Bar and the Underground Comedy Club. That Underground Comedy Club is so cool. Yeah, there it is. So that's if you're in Toronto. Mike Vecchione is going to be at Mojo's Comedy Club in Youngstown Friday, December 16th and, fr and Saturday, December 17th. So go get tickets at MikeVecchione.com. That's V-E-C-C-H-I-O-N-E dot com. Vecchi one. And Vecchi, Vecchi one. So unselfish. Dan Soder, the double dog himself. <laughs> yeah. Going to be at Helium Comedy Club in Illadelph Thursday, yeah. December 29th through New Year's Eve. Saturday, December 31st. Make sure you get your tickets for that at Helium comedy.com just you know it's his second favorite club uh it's actually my first favorite it's his first favorite club until he has another <laughs> club to promote and, and then, then that will be his favorite club and then it just shimmies on in Ooh, i hate to change the party vibe in here but uh if we just bring the lights down a little bit Ooh, you know a lot of people say comedy is uh, it's just jokes it's just punchlines man but some people when well, they find a deeper meaning they find a soulfulness in it. We got my common law husband on the line right now. Oh, yeah. Isn't that old? I call him Vermont Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I call him. <laughs> that took me right out of the character. <laughs> Vermont Sweet. That's oh, who your name should be. Mike Fenoich joins us on the phone. Mikey Fenoich. Howdy, hombres. What's cooking? Amigo. Hey, brothers. <laughs> back in town, man. I was up in Vermont putting some bids on some juice. <laughs> <laughs> some juicy pieces of land parcel. Found, found a crunchy piece uh, of uh, land up right. there. Ah, this has got yeah. a lot of good vibes just bubbling up out of the soil. <laughs> There's a well of good wishes outtone. underneath. Got an alto and a baritone microphone coming, man. I'm super <laughs> jazzed for my next album. Dude, it's going to go everywhere. What's up, Mike? You were out today shooting stuff with the Jokers. Up yeah, up at the kayak mall. Was it a awesome? Lot of fun. Yeah, it was good. I got you a birthday present there. Ooh. 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 Was That's it Louis J. Was it, was it Louis J. Gomez's childhood underwear? He dug up Louis's <laughs> dad and brought the bones to him. Oh. <laughs> the knife still in the ribs. <laughs> I met his sister. She works at the club. She works at Levity. I had no idea. Oh wow. Well, oh, it's hilarious, really. Janice yeah, E. Gomez. Yeah. I like always like the, they always have a middle initial on all their names. <laughs> Louis J. Like and Janice. She's a sweetheart, yeah. Fecchione is in there right yeah, now. Yeah, how are you, brother? Oily, uh, Python contingency on the bonfire. What's yeah. up, right. brother? How are you, Mikey? Out goes Fenoy Good, and comes with Gianni. Happy birthday to my. Uh, We're going to have a face off. Uh, 2555 five, five versus uh, Lower East Side. Oh, it's the East Village, but okay. The East Village. The East Village boy is going to dance two five five five. Oh, where do you, you guys, guys want to meet up? Somewhere? <laughs> you guys somewhere in Midtown Tunnel? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Neutral meet. turf. We'll do it in. Uh, meet we'll us on, on Roosevelt. Land. Meet us on Roosevelt Island. What was that? What, what movie was that? Peoples were killed. Was that The Outsiders or is that West Side Story? I get my musicals uh, and <laughs> and old timey <laughs> eighty movies. Which is the one where they start describing what they're going to use? Yeah, but they have the meeting right. It's like we'll use car antennas, chains, baseball bats. That's that West Side Story. 
it's West Side Story. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Or is it Essie Hinton? I thought it was both. Is it Rumblefish? Raw. Yeah. God, what a great book. And then later a... Uh, fuck, who was that actor? He's something about Mary, Matt... Oh, by the way, on Matt, on, D- Matt yeah. Dillon. Matt, Matt Dillon. Dillon. I got to tell you, he was in Outsiders and Rumblefish. Yeah, he was. I got to tell you what, if, uh, if no one's listened to me yet and watched The Bad Girls Club, part one of the two-part reunion was last night. I mean, these girls say words like, I want my best dress. And I mean, the girls got dressed where their nips are almost out, and they're definitely mm. not wearing underwear. And they're like, but if it's going to come to a rumble, it'll be a rumble then. When you're mm. a bad girl, and you got to fight with your tits out. <laughs> bitch. Bitch. <laughs> Crazy bitch. <laughs> Get off my orange juice, bitch. Easy does it. Something, something. You go, dude, the one girl, uh, these two black girls were fighting, and she goes... They had lesbian sex, then they got mad at each other and hated each other, and then the girl goes, that's why, that's why, that's why your kid's ugly, and everyone goes, oh, and she goes, you raising two gorillas, bitch, <laughs> it was so great, and then you see the other girl, just there, like, security's holding her, she's tiny, she just goes, <laughs> she's like, like a, like a tea kettle that just is going off and no one stops, she just screams for a minute straight. Wait, do you have it? Are these them? Oh, that's winter. She's going to get her shit rocked by somebody. Yeah, turn this up. They Give always, some volume. It's funny because the whole previews is them blotting their eye makeup from crying. Oh, yeah. Scores will be settled. You trying to fight? You want to fight? Let's fight. Get off my stage. Get off, bitch. Yes, dude. Can we get tickets to the next one? Is this? Yes. Tickets to the next what? No more. It's out in L.A. Uh, cool. We'll go out there and do a week of shows. Oh, so a reunion? Yes. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. 100% I would do that. Let's go get mm-hmm. tickets. Go I, that's, that's my Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Stanley Cup Finals. I'm not a hockey guy. Uh, I'd like dude. to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, Probably more than that. Let's add. Absolutely... Now, you know what? I'm wrong. I wouldn't want to go to just any old Super Bowl. You want to go to an Eagles that. one? I go to Eagles Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm. But, like, you know... The Titans versus the uh, you know whoever I, I I'd go see Bad Girls Club reunion first. Well, I mean, I definitely think we need to find out, Jacob. You need to get on this, and we need to find out. They're probably filming. The they already got to be filming next season. So yeah. then that means the Bad Girls Reunion Club doesn't come out until after the ep- the episodes air. Hmm. Well, here's what happens: so they air most of the season, and then they film the reunion because the p- people come back and they and they with all that new info, it's like. You said you were my best friend, and that we had a real connection, and now you like, I found out you call my kids gorillas. It's just great. Okay. It's so great. So we'll have to go to a Bad Girls 2 Club reunion. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it <laughs> makes me so happy. We'll go out to L.A. Fanoich won't watch it with me ever. What are you talking about? I watch it. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Michael, I Michael, don't know when you're going to realize your calling is just doing post school wrap up of shitty television. <laughs> you're the you're the you're the John Madden of awful TV. That's I love it. <sighs> now here's a here's a lady that likes to show her tits and slap another bitch. <laughs> yeah, is that bad TV? We should be able, Fenoya. We should get him one of those things where he can illustrate on it. Now, right here, yeah. you're gonna see, you're gonna see that she, uh, she comes uncorked right about here. Now, if this girl was rocking muff, you'd see it right here. <laughs> but they blur it out. It was, I, I'm, just, I'm just, a, I'm just a shitty Pat Summerall on the side. Like you got it right, Jay. There she is at the thirty, the twenty, the twenty-five. She oh, has boy. lost it. <laughs> that sure is some wild muff. Here and then bam. bam. Mikey, you come to the creek in the cave, right, Mikey? Yeah, brother. I just want to say happy uh, happy birthday, my friend. Uh, great year. Here's to another great one coming up. And I'll see you in a little bit. Ooh, also, smooth. thanks, brother. I love you. Bye, Fenoya. I love you. Bye, too. Mikey. Peace, guys. Later. You ever, you ever walk into a grocery store and have to check out yourself? You're like, man, I didn't come here to buy bread and get a new job. It's Mike Fenoya, the originator of Jamity. Jamity. Who knows where it could go? That's the ride. Oh, that's the ride. Jazz comedy. Uh, we only have a few minutes left here, so yeah. I figure this would be a time where, Isabel, you give your heartfelt, emotional speech about my birthday. Well, we got so we got. We, we give a heartfelt speech, and then we're going to end it with a treat for your father that we have. Oh. Do I have <laughs> to? This is your chance. Do you have to? No. You can look yeah. up right in the eye and tell exactly. everything. Listen, maybe you'll be inspired. Put the, put the, put the headphones put on. Put the cans on, yeah. Make this. Okay. Oh, wow. Jesus H. <laughs> or do that. <laughs> Just look at him right in the eye and say everything you ever wanted to. Right now. Um. I don't think you really like me because I'm not a boy. 
Also, you get very annoyed with me quite often. Did you find my diary? <laughs> <laughs> she found your old MySpace blogs? <laughs> Did you find... Well, ah, damn it. What was it? My journal? Did you find my live journal? <laughs> oh, yeah. You went to his Tumblr? I love you. I just try to make you a boy. And you know what? Be his girl. Here's a special girl. I'm trying to save this. Special girl. <laughs> hey, hold on, guys. I don't mean to steal the spotlight. Isabel's never emotional. Hey, Mike. No, really? No. Are you with me? Isabel's with her mom? Emotion? Maybe with her mom. Did you get emotional with your mom ever? When he threw out my sneakers, I was very emotional. What kind of sneakers were they? Jordans. Jordans. Why did he throw out your Like crying emotional or angry emotional? Crying. Both. Crying. No. And angry. Why'd you throw out a Jordan? Because she loved those Jordans more than me. No, that's not why. But that'd be a great reason. Because I'm like, you love these Jordans more than me. Yeah. Um, no, she got in major trouble at school. So I tossed her Jordans in the old sewer. Stand by the move. In the sewer? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I did was bought myself some Jordans. <laughs> and, then a hom and then a homeless kid found him and became LeBron James. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, I haven't bought a pair of sneakers that was by chance. It wasn't even on purpose. I haven't bought a pair of sneakers for myself that weren't Jordans since. <laughs> I become exclusively a Jordans so guy. You turn your dad into a Jordans guy. And he guy. still refuses to buy me a new pair. You know she has a new pair. You, know, it's you funny. didn't buy them. I don't have to buy them. Your mom bought them for you. We so think your mom gets money <laughs> from lawyering. <laughs> you think that pays? You think being a lawyer pays? You think you think uh, Lucas the scab or whatever the fuck she's talking to in jail is giving enough money? For you, you think Jordans? Johnny? You think Johnny Soups has got enough cash <laughs> stacked away that he could get you Jordans? You think Double Double Wolf Soda? Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> soda. I don't mean to steal your spotlight, but I love Lu you, Lu Isabella, and I don't wish you were a boy. I mean, I did initially, but now, you know, you're a pretty cool little girl. You're a very cool little girl. I love you. She's just not, she's 14, so she plays the hardest thing. But yeah. let me take, mm -hmm. Lou, kick up the music a little bit. <laughs> hey, Becky Owen. I give some, some, some shower music in the background, like Mike's in the shower during this. So I would say, Mike always listens to, what was the song we were talking What song did I play during the break? Collision. Collision? This one. What's it this one. It's called Clyde. This is Clyde. This is Clyde. Howie Day. Yeah, Howie Day. Mike always listens to mid '90s rock in the shower. I call him mid '90s Mike. And then uh, the shower door was open, and I just kept walking by doing emotional roommate things. I kept going, "Hey, Mike, <laughs> we might be out of paper towels, but we're never out of love." <laughs> Does Mike come out in a towel, like gripping it in the corner? An American flag towel, dude. I swear to God, he comes out shirtless in an American flag towel, and I always have to tell him to put a sexy patriotism away. That grates his body. It's unreal. So good. But then you hear him do his workouts because he usually doesn't run at home. <laughs> And it's terrifying. It's ter Why? What are you doing? Because he goes, ah! <laughs> it's, a, ah! it's a lot of screams. Doing? What are you doing in the house? It's, uh, it's half aerobic, half yoga. You're screaming during yoga? <laughs> yeah, I gotta take my legs behind my. You gotta, That's pretty hilarious. It's, it's, you right, gotta now, push your breaking point. Get into downward dog. No! <laughs> <laughs> He goes like this. He goes, "Hey, uh, you gonna be on the, you gonna be on the living room for a little bit? I gotta I gotta go do my exercise." I go, "Yeah, no big deal. I'll take a weed nap or whatever." And I lay down and I hear like, "Yeah, yeah!" But it's like it's got goo goo dolls going on because it's mid it's mid nineties, Mike. When you go out, he's just doing like different like Thai cheese. Ah! He's, doing, he's doing warrior pose, but then he brings it down and just does like the most grueling push up he can, where he's like, "I know your name. I know your name." Call resistance, resistance. <laughs> but they're they're, sc they're screams of pain, not of power. So yeah. it's 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 a very weak scream. And yeah. I don't want Dan Soda to see me. <laughs> Playing Madden in the living room like a bitch. Ah, <laughs> uh, but then he gets out of the shower, and I'm like, I get it. I go, it I go like this as he walks. I go, Hey, Mike. He looks up. I go, I get it. Did it make you feel like more of a jizz, though, when, when Mike was... Because Mike's always been like a, an in-shape guy. Always been jacked. And caring about that. And when you said he would come home, like with like... He'd come home for, with his midnight snack. It's like a fucking jar of almond butter and like a cucumber. Yeah. And you got you're like pizza on your chest and cigarettes. Yeah. And he goes, what's up, bro? You're <laughs> home early. I was telling him when you first moved in, when I was still drinking, and he would come home and I was smoking cigarettes in the living room watching The Wire. Yeah. And he'd come home and he'd be like, hey, just have this sensible late night snack. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I'm five camel lights in. <laughs> We're only 20 minutes in this. Omar's a badass. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, turns out I can't eat five Big Macs.
Max. Yeah. Oh, man, I wouldn't go in the bathroom tomorrow morning. It's going to be a lot of yelling and wailing. Yeah. It's going to sound like one of your yogas. i got to sweat this whiskey out of me between 5 and 8 a.m. before I go wait tables at the dose. Um, put those plugs up, Christine, because our boy, Mikey... It's going to be at Mojo's Comedy Club in Youngstown, Ohio, Friday, December 16th, and Saturday, December 17th. Get tickets at MikeVecchione.com. You can also follow him at MikeV on Twitter. That's a, that's a homecoming, Mikey, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's from um, I noticed none of you guys play the Rust Belt. <laughs> no. That's where they need my comedy, well, in the Rust they, Belt. When they bring the jobs back, I will work there. <laughs> Is Mojo's Comedy Club the main headquarters of the Vecchione Mushroom Cannery? And that's it. The, yes. the that's it. Uh Big J. Okerson making his way the California way. He's going to be at the American Comedy Company in San Diego Awesome Club December 29th through New Year's Eve, and then he's going to be at the Punchline in San Fran January 5th through January 7th. Go get tickets at bigjcomedy.com. And if you're in Toronto tomorrow and Friday, yes. I'm going to be, well, opening for Joe Rogan, I believe that's sold out at Massey Hall on Friday, but tomorrow night, shows at Comedy Bar and Underground Comedy Club, uh, part of Rob Mayhew's uh, Dark Comedy Festival, which is going to be so cool. Um, some cool announcements about some stuff coming up, too. I don't know if yeah. we should say uh, anything about the, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll lay, we'll lay low on it. Dan Soder, of course, is going to be in, uh, me and Mike, uh, Philly guys. Yeah. Yeah. Two Philly. I'm um, going to be in here. Oh, fuck. I'm going to be at their... Uh... <laughs> no, I know. You're going to be there the 29th through the 31st, New Year's Eve of December. Make sure you check out Dan there. It's going to be an awesome... Dude, that's going to be... That's going to be fun. That's a fucking fun, fun, fun weekend, yeah. I'm really excited. I'm gonna... That club is so great. And it's dude, so much fun. And, and, the, you and there's know, so many bonfire fans. There's already uh, People out. are already True. reaching out about who's going to come out, so there's going to be a lot of good groups. That is uh, awesome. Make sure you check it out. You can get your tickets at heliumcomedy.com. And uh, happy birthday, buddy. Bro, Thanks, we had, bro. We got you some treats. Pull them out, Jacob. We, I said to pull it out later not on in front of my daughter, Jake. No, not yet. But we got you some cupcakes. Pull it out. We're going to have some of that. So happy birthday, Big J. Happy birthday, J. Yeah. You're yeah. the best. And we, uh, all you campers, you have a good week. Love and we you guys. Will... Love you, Scoops. Love you, Carla, for coming out. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you Monday. We're going to be live. I promise. It's two weeks Live, but not new. Uh, you know how it works. Crackle, crackle. That is your night, bro. That what? is your night, bro. What? That is your night, bro. Oh, we got a Rolfer coming in on Monday. There's, yeah, I got it in. All right, by the way. All right, bye.